Some people take the straight path in life. But at Arizona State University, we respect your twists and turns. They make our online students more driven to excel in their professional lives. That's why our personalized suite of services empowers you with innovative resources and staff that sticks with you. Make your next turn with one of our 300-plus programs at ASU, number one in innovation for nine consecutive years. Visit us at asuonline.asu.edu to learn more. So, Michelle. So, David. What, 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 what a huge <laughs> period of intelligence has been over the last week. I know. Week. It's like so much can happen in a week, basically. Uh, Nancy Pelosi, the 82-year-old leader of Congress, went who, to... Who is single-handedly trying to uh, start World War III. Oh, well, come on. They've got, to make, they've got to sell the weapons to Taiwan somehow. <laughs> I know. And also, she just needs to stay in her lane. Oh, but uh, look, you know, uh, but also, I thought the, the Chinese parking tanks on the beach going, you know what? We, I love Everyone this. get off the beach. We've got to I park know. our tanks it's in It's so good. It's, like, it's, it's so China. Chill. Everyone chill. <laughs> There's an old Russian proverb that's called the Chinese last warning. Yeah. Because China, during the conflict between yeah. China and Russia, the Chinese gave the Russians a last warning. This is it. No more. 600 times. Yes. Right. So This is your final straw. Yeah, this is it. This, you cross this line and I'll step back and draw another yeah, line. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right, so there's that. Then there was the big ADF review that's happening. Right, yes, because we were talking about this yesterday. I actually spoke a, a bit about it in the news because it's the first time in 30 years that they've kind of had a look at this stuff. Well, not exactly. We've had white papers into defence before, but what they've basically done is the big thing about it is they've gone, you got six months, get it done. It's an actual, like, big-scale inquiry looking at Australia's preparedness yep. and Force how, projection, yes, force structure. All of that stuff. And, I mean, the big preparedness problem we've got is we've got this huge huge gap in our defensive capability because for some reason the last government went and bought 500, I think, new tanks. Yeah. And we haven't used a tank in a war since, I think, Korea. I mean, why do we need a tank? Yeah, we, what we really need is boats because we're this thing called an island. Yes, right? and we need cyber. Yeah, there's a lot of stuff that, yes. that... And then, of course, and this is what we're going to talk about this week... I know. Um, ...is the ASIO, AFP. A whole bunch of people have turned around and said, ladies and gentlemen, here is an audio intercept that we've got from an assassination back in the 80s. Which and we it, have spoken about. We have already spoken about it. It's For me, I'm like going, hang on, I thought that case was closed. Yes. But it's, it's not. not. So it's like, it's crazy at the moment. But because of that, and also because a couple of weeks ago, a former Japanese Prime Minister by the name of... Shinzo, Shinzo Abe. Abe. Abe so was sad. gunned down in the street. I think what we're going to do is we're going to look at assassination. I mean, I'm excited. All right, put on your bulletproof vest, kiddies. <laughs> it's going to get mean. You're listening to I Spy, the lone gunman of Australian intelligence. What are you doing here? I'm a lone gunman. Oh, Lo- did you not need a backup? No. Yeah. Did you bring any ammo? Oh, yeah, I have heaps. Oh, good. I, I forgot the gun. Hello and welcome to I Spied. My name is Michelle Stevenson. I'm here with David Callan. And this ep, we're going to touch on assassinations and particularly off the back of the recent Al-Qaeda one as well. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah, of the, course. The, the Al-Qaeda leader. And I'm going to try and say this. It's I, I always get it get it confused. It's I'm an al Zawahiri. Thank you, Zawahiri. Let's call him Al. <laughs> Al. 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 Al will do. Al died. There's, there's pretty many. I mean, there's... Funnily enough, in the 20th century, there were 200 attempted assassinations against world leaders. Yes. Out of that 200 attempts, 60 were successful. Right. So assassination is not uncommon when you really think about it. Now, that's just against world leaders. Yeah. When you start playing all the other games of who's been assassinated, it's a major problem. It's a big thing. Now, interestingly enough, I mean, I don't know what your moral standpoint for assassination is. What would Uh, it be? I mean, well, there were times where I was like, Donald Trump could probably take a bullet and the world would be a better place. We've all had a <laughs> you know, we've all desired somebody to be shot. I mean, like, let's be honest. Like Every- honestly, Donald Trump was like one of those people and I think it's because it's not that I particularly hate him, but I had to listen to him every day yeah. through his whole term. Yeah, as a news reader. As a news got, reader oh, and it was just the insanity yeah. of the words. Yeah. Now there's the interesting thing about that is for me Donald Trump, why waste the bullet? No. Right? Right, Honest to God, no. because do you want to make something that fat and grotesque a martyr? <laughs> and because this is the other thing. Oh, yeah, that's the other It thing. creates martyrdom, yeah. all right? Now, the interesting thing is assassination is regarded as a tool of state. In fact, a lot of people regard it as the ultimate precision weapon. Yes. Which is a really good way of putting it because you can take one person out and you might be able to correct a huge problem. You may be able to save thousands yes. upon thousands of lives. Now, 
The interesting thing is, let's look at the definition. Now, the standard definition for assassination is to murder premeditatively and treacherously. Say premeditatively, like premeditatedly. <laughs> Shut up. Oh, stop being it on me. Yeah. <laughs> right. To murder premeditatively yeah. and. Prem- <laughs> <laughs> this is just going to be one of the. I know. To murder treacherously. Yes, um, and treacherously. And think about it before you do it. But that's so not. It's Al treacherously. Yeah. Those are the things uh, that we yeah. picked up. You can't say Al Zawahiri <laughs> and I can't say premeditatively. It's too many T's. Yeah. Now, the interesting thing is mm. governments don't use that definition. Most governments will use the definition, the deliberate and extra legal killing of an individual for political purposes, which is a much better description yes. of how to, of what it is. Now, the funny thing about it is there are certain countries that do do assassination. In mm. fact, there are three countries that quite happily go, yeah, we will assassinate you. Would you like to guess <laughs> which ones that are public have publicly said, yeah, we'll kill you. If we have to, we'll take you out. Iran? Uh, nope. Oh, China? Nope. Russia. Nope. Oh, they will do it. Don't, I know, get, don't like- get me wrong. They're all the usual suspects, but then they'll go, nothing to do with us. Oh, then they'll be like backing away slowly out of room. wasn't us. There are three countries that will assassinate what? you and go, Who? yeah, we'll do that. UK. Uh, yes. Britain has used assassination and has not been shy about it. Right. Egypt. Egypt. They've done, well, hell, Egypt, they're pretty hardcore. Mm. And then Israel. Oh, I meant to say Israel. Yeah, and I said Iran. Yep. I meant to say Israel because I was like thinking of the Mossads and. The- well, there's the interesting case, the Munich mm. bombing. How they mm. basically went all right, and that the interesting thing about that, what yeah. I really like about that was it wasn't so much. This is a political thing. It was kind of political, but it was also revenge. Yeah. It was an act of vengeance. They went, you did this to us. We are going to kill you for that. Mm. And we're not going to get you in jail. We're not going to be able to take you to trial. We are going to hunt you down and kill you. Right? They were not ashamed of that. Yeah, the they're, not, they're not backwards and coming forward. They're not. Now, the other one was there was, I, I can't remember the name, but there was an assassination of scientists. Right. Iranian scientists. They were assassinated by Israel because they were working on the nuclear program mm. that Iran were running. So- so the Israelis went, took him out, and then turned around and went, yeah, we did that. Yeah, that was us. <laughs> they, they had no bones about it. Yeah. Right? So assassination is a tool of state, right, yep. regarded as the ultimate precision weapon. Interestingly enough, the USA actually have standing executive orders from multiple presidents banning it. It all started in 1976 with Gerald Ford after the CIA had become so – Corrupt isn't the word. It had, it was basically acting as a force unto itself. I mean, so basically they've become that again. Well, uh, I mean, especially out of the Gen. If you're listening, paying attention to what's coming out of the Gen Six stuff, the CIA is. Uh, well, the CIA, the FBI, I mean, Secret Service. Uh, the, secret, the Secret Service is the one that's a real worry yeah. there. But interestingly enough, in 1976, Gerald Ford brought out Executive Order 11905. Oh, 11905. I know it well. And 11905 mm-hmm. was basically stifling the CIA's ability to operate because it. They discovered that they'd been listening to American citizens. They're not allowed to do that. No. They were operating on American soil. Interesting how they do that, though. Yeah. <laughs> they do it, but they're not meant to. Yeah. Um, and at the end, they just tacked on, and yeah, by the way, no assassinations. Oh. Now, since then, the standing order is Executive Order 12333. Okay. You can kill people now. No, prohibition on assassination. No person employed or acting on behalf of the US government shall engage in or conspire to engage in assassination. Right. There's one really big problem with an executive order. What? It's a policy. It's not a law. Oh. Ah. Okay. Well, what's the difference between policy and law? Doesn't policy become law? Policy is what you want to have happen. Yeah. Law is enforceable. Right. So, you you can get- I have an executive order of something that I would like to happen. You pay attention if you want. <laughs> yeah. Kind of like that. Like, you, you should adhere to the executive order. But really, if you can prove that, well, we had to, it's not that Binding, yeah. right? So, I mean, the interesting thing is a lot of the executive it's like a orders- like on it. Yeah. The, a lot of the executive orders that Trump signed in are now being totally ignored by this administration. So, an administration- so As after, well they should. Yeah. But after Ford had brought in Executive Order 11905, yep. Reagan brought one in on assassination. I think then it was brought in by Clinton. And because of that, yep. right, America technically does not assassinate. Now, on the flip side, oh boy, they do a lot of assassination- I mean, yeah, for they're a country that consistently assassinates each other. Well, there are, well, that's not again, it's not politically motivated <laughs> to go and open up in a schoolroom, all right? Well, now, you never know. I know. No, I feel true. like it is kind of a political. I feel like some of it is political. Yeah, oh, uh, school shootings no. 
But I'm sure that there are people getting killed out there because of their political beliefs. But 100%. Is, but it's not – an extra legal killing is different to a murder. Mm. It's beyond the scope of the law. Right. But it is regarded as a government operation or activity. Yeah. So the great case is Al Zawahiri. So uh, with me three times fast, Al Zawahiri. Al, Al Zawahiri. <laughs> yeah. You say premeditated? Premeditated. Now say premeditatedly. Oh, my God, I just said it. Premeditatedly. There you go. Yeah. Right. So Al Zawahiri, yep. who was the leader of Al-Qaeda, mm. after the Americans had removed Osama bin Laden <laughs> yeah. from the picture, they didn't assassinate him. They removed him. Yeah, I know. What's the difference between removing and assassinating? Right. Well, here's the interesting point. That's a really good question because yeah. the whole thing is America's take on assassination has changed because when that the first executive order came out, Americans were like, no, we shouldn't be doing that. It's illegal and immoral. Mm. But after 9-11- like take, like, take them all. Take them all. They wanted payback. <laughs> yeah. Right? So what happened was Osama bin Laden was the big target. Al Zawahiri has been active ever since. Mm. His presence in Kabul was in direct- violation of the agreement that the US and the Taliban had signed right. saying they would not support Al-Qaeda. The way they got him, though, they killed him on a balcony of a house. In a, in a drone strike. Yeah. God bless the drone strike. Generally, people are saying it was probably a Hellfire missile. And what's really interesting was it's a very specific Hellfire missile mm -hmm. that doesn't explode. What does it do? They call it the Flying Ginshu or the Ginsu. You right. ever heard of Ginsu knives? Yeah. Right, those ones. In, oh, I can cut through a boot. I can cut through an nail. I can so cut through. So what does it do? Basically, as it drops on the target, it yeah. opens up with just blades. <gasps> Gross. Yeah. Now, a lot of people reported hearing explosions, but that could have just been the kinetic energy being released of a high-speed projectile with blades sticking out of it, hitting one guy sitting on a balcony. I think they also might have taken out two of his bodyguards. I'm not sure. I mean, there's some kind of irony in the fact that he was a surgeon being taken out by blades. He was dissected. Yeah. Right. <laughs> um, it wasn't an assassination. It was exploratory surgery yeah. that went horribly wrong. And look, he helped coordinate the 9-11 attacks. You know, he, he helped. Very that. wanted. So he was an extremely wanted man. Yes. And on the top 10 wanted list at the FBI, he is now marked as deceased. Now, the <laughs> same technique was used- Imagine having that stamp. Wouldn't you just be really happy about this? Stamp, deceased. You're the guy that gets to walk up to the wall <laughs> yeah, and yeah. go- Deceased. Boom, check it out. Thanks, yeah. deceased guy. Well done. Yeah. Yep. I will go back to my office and wait for the next one. <laughs> yeah, yep. yeah. Just sits there. So Soleimani, who was the head of the Iranian yep. Republican Guard Corps, basically he was the- second most powerful person in the country under the Ayatollah. Right. He was taken out with the same sort of thing. Generally, people believe it was a Hellfire missile, one of these flying Ginshu, mm. right? So the interesting thing is they're using precision weapons in a precision tactic. So assassination is a precise tactic to remove one player or you know one or two people to save getting involved in a war. Yeah. And this is one of the things they say is it's like when the decision is made to do this. Now- Americans won't call it an assassination. They will call it the removal of a non-combatant. Yes. Right? But essentially what you have to go through is, A, it will be preemptive, but you've got to go through the rule of last resort and the concept of proportionality. Right. One, do we have any other way to deal with this problem? No, we don't. And is it a proportional response? Right. right. If, if we could go and kidnap him and arrest him and bring him to justice and have him in a court of law where someone can grandstand in front of a jury, all good and well, they're not going to do that. It's just easier and cheaper mm. to ax him. I think, uh, I think a hellfire only costs you about $150,000. Yeah. It's cheap. But the only, I mean, the only issue is now that the US have kind of pissed off the Taliban, so now they have to continue some talks with them. I don't think the Americans would ever not piss off the Taliban, to be perfectly honest. I mean, I mean yeah. the, the Taliban don't care. The, the, their thing is, okay, you took him out. I mean, they. I think they do probably have a bit of an issue with the Americans just going into, like, Kabul and assassinating someone on their land. Yeah, oh, yeah. Well, definitely it's going to yes. be a, a sovereignty yeah. issue. That's always going to come up. Yeah. Now, the interesting thing is... Is because the Americans have started using drones, and I know you have a very strong opinion on drones and how they work and how they you, – you have said to me on a number of occasions going, drones are insidious and I think they're terrible. Well, no. I think it removes the element of understanding what war is about. Yes, definitely. It, it turns it into a game. It turns it into Call of Duty. Yes, it turns it into Call of Duty and I think what, what we've seen is – like civilians have been caught up in drone strikes. Definitely. And that, I mean, this is a lot to do with the, like why WikiLeaks kind of released a lot of stuff. And I think by removing that, 
then the people who are driving the drones, the combatants, are also removing any sense of, I don't know, understanding of humanity? I, I don't it, know. Does that make sense? Uh, I think it also comes down to a very simple point where it detaches you from the – Yes. It's a detachment from the Yes. Act. So when you – if you do kill civilians, you wouldn't really feel much because in your head you're not really there on the ground seeing the fallout. Yeah. There's a, actually, there was a movie I watched recently about a drone pilot who mm. sort of – he accidentally kills a family, yes. right? And it turns out that the person he killed wasn't that. And he has a terrible experience, winds up in loss because he's at Edwards Air Force Base or somewhere. Because that's the other thing. If you're flying a drone, you're mm. not in theatre. You can be back in the Ameri- in America. Yes. You know, so you're removed conditions. from yeah. the situation. So I think that that's kind of – but on the other hand, I'd, I'd prefer that than them being there and fighting. Oh, God, yeah. Right. Yeah. I mean, it saves but- lives. Now, the interesting thing about it is the assassination of al-Zawahiri – Mm. was a CIA operation. Yes. The CIA tracked was. him down. The CIA yep. put it all together. They yep. they planned it, strategized with it, tacticized it, did all of that stuff, and then they got permission for the president. You know, it was a go on the operation, mm. and Paul Aldal walked out onto his balcony one you know, lovely summer probably, morning probably in smoking Istanbul. Probably a cigarette because, you know. Maybe some hashish. I mean, yeah. that's where assassin comes from, from the yeah. hashish that the assassins used to smoke. But – he walked out on his balcony and then he basically had a base of minor surgery to detach his body from reality. But right? also it's very interesting. Like he managed to evade mm. authorities for a very long time. Well, one of the interesting things is how, again, we talk about 200 attempts on leaders. A lot of leaders have been assassinated, mm. uh, national leaders, which is very interesting because for a long time you didn't try to assassinate national leaders. It was under the Treaty of Westphalia from mm. something like 1620. 27, where it was a rule, it was an agreement amongst all you know, a nations. A gentleman's agreement. A gentleman's agreement that you didn't try to kill the king. <laughs> yeah. Please don't kill us. Well, the other thing about that is if you capture the king, yeah. well, it's worth more, right? Yeah. There is the whole idea of ransom. Yeah. But the 20th century changed that. There was a lot of, I mean, the, the most famous, one of the most famous ones of the 20, early 20th century was Franz Ferdinand, Archduke Ferdinand, yeah. which started World War I. Mm. Uh, Trotsky, actually, Luke Disconnect, thank you for showing me that photo of the ice pick that killed Trotsky. Um, Trotsky <laughs> was killed with an ice pick. Oh, my God. Right, so not a, like an ice pick that you break That's up. That's pretty violent. Pick. It was an axe to the head. That's violent. Right. Yeah, it's violent. JFK was shot with a sni- by a sniper, but the most successful firearm, other than drones at the moment, yeah. the most successful way of taking out uh, your target is a pistol. Right. Right, but a pistol at arm's length. Yes. The person could be- is but you, have to, be, be, you have to be really close. Got to be really, really close. <laughs> yeah. I mean, Lincoln was taken out that way. Archduke Ferdinand was taken out that way. The one that I find really interesting, and this, do you want to hear about an Australian attempted assassination? Yes. And there have been a couple of uh, political assassinations in well, Australia. Well, yeah, because we want to talk about one uh, that happened 30 Sarik years ago. Arawak, uh, yep. But there was one that happened back in about 1890-something. Yeah. Prince Albert. Grandson of Queen Victoria, Prince Albert was in Australia. He was the first royal to tour Australia. Yeah. And he was over at Clontarf at a picnic Clontarf. to raise money for mm. the seamen's shelter. That's for sailors, not the other thing. Um, <laughs> And he was shot. Yeah, I'm sorry. So, I'm sorry. There were so many jokes I could have gone with, and I just kept all them out these of. little white tadpoles looking for somewhere to live. <laughs> <laughs> well, that guy got the egg. Where are we meant to go? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, anyway, right. So he was at this picnic. Yep. And he was shot in the back by oh. a Fenian. Right. So an Irish Republican. Yes. Uh, shot him in the back. Now the interesting thing about that was he survived. Mm-hmm. Um, the bullets were removed. He was in Sydney Hospital, but. To celebrate his recovery, a fund was created to build a hospital called the Royal Prince Alfred, and that is now the hospital that stands at the RPA, uh, the RPA in Canada. There you go. So there you go. So assassination can have a positive effect, but <laughs> you'll only get, you'll if get a the hospital. person survives. You get yep. a hospital out of yep. it. Now, the, as we, we've got Sarik Arawak. Ar- yes. Ar- Ar- Ari- Ariak. And this was really interesting because I kind of, this popped up in my news yesterday and yep. I had sent you that and I was like, this is really interesting. And then I realized you'd already sent it to me as well. But, um, oh, I'm glad you noticed. <laughs> I know. It's, it's like, here's the thing I do not pay attention to you a lot. Like, you send me things and I really don't look at them until I have to look at them. It's like you're my studio wife. <laughs> <laughs> I know. And it's like, when I sent, I realized that I sent you something that was a complete copy of what you'd already sent me. <laughs> It didn't anyway. matter. It didn't matter. Anyway, Look. this is very fascinating. Yeah. 
Right. So uh, to set the scene. So more than 40 years ago. Yeah. So back in the 80s. And we've spoken about this. We before. have spoken about it. In fact, it's one of our very earliest episodes yes. that talks about this. Yes. But essentially the Turkish consul general mm. in Sydney was shot outside his residence in Dover Heights. And as I've said before, if you go There's to the plaque. house, there is a plaque yeah. in the street. that And his bodyguard. Yeah. He and his bodyguard were shot and killed by people who claimed themselves to be the justice commandos of the Armenian right. genocide. And they killed him as an act of revenge for the way the Turks treated the Armenians yeah. back in 1915. Now, a lot of people would go, really? Uh, like that, but you know, can't you let it go? To which I would say, say that to a Christian about Jesus and see how far it gets <laughs> yeah. you. Right? So the whole thing was he was shot. Now, Personally, I thought this case had been solved. I yeah. thought it was closed, done. It was like two men apparently fled on a motorbike. Fled on a motorbike. One of them burned his thigh on the tailpipe. Right. I thought that identified the person because then there was another yeah. attack on a Turkish consul down in Melbourne and I thought that sort of exposed the whole thing. Turns out, no. Turns out that investigation is still open yes. and what they've done, what the police are now asking, and if you go to the Sydney Morning Herald, sorry, yes. you know, if you've got the subscription, if you don't, I'll, I'll send you one. You can, yeah, you right. can play the audio of the Phone call. You play the audio of the phone call. Now, what I find really interesting is the copper going, you know, so can I just get you to repeat that so I'm clear of what you're saying? And the, what they want is can anyone identify what she's saying in the phrase, the few words before the word author? Right. Right. Or, or no, the words after author. We are the authors of, and then you hear, <laughs> right? Mm -hmm. And then the, you hear the police officer go, oh, can you just repeat what you said so yeah. we're very clear on that? She goes, oh, we are the authors of, <laughs> Oh. And you're like, go, dang it, you asked twice. So they want that little clue. They think that that's going to be a well, clue. That's and going there's to crack still it open. a there's a million dollar reward out still. A million dollar reward. A million dollar reward for anyone who provides wow, information like, in relation to the case. That would probably pay like two years Maybe of private we need to school. Crack this. Yeah, we need to crack this. Yes. <laughs> right. So the whole thing <laughs> is yes. this case is still ongoing. Mm. And they're also going, if anyone listens to this and recognizes the voice, can you let us know? And they're sure, the police are certain that there is someone out there who knows who this is. Of course, there's someone out there who knows who it is. They were the people who probably yes. did it. Yes. And they're not going to go, well, they've got us on tape. We better confess. So this is really interesting. And I think yeah. we're going to see, get some answers from this because they've kind of re churned this up. We've got the million dollar reward. There's this audio that's mm. been released. And I think this is probably one for us to kind of keep an eye out for. Definitely. This is a case that we will definitely be following. Yep. Right. Now, the whole thing about this is, again, it was a politically motivated yes. attack. Now, we would call it a terrorist act. But they would call it an assassination. Yes, now, I mean, I think at the, I think now we would call it a terrorist attack. I think at the time we'd call it an assassination. No, 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 it was called a terrorist oh, attack. Was it? Oh, definitely, yeah, yeah, yeah. Hmm. right. Particularly because it was an organization. It's so funny, like I never had heard the word terror or terrorist attack until 9-11. Well, I'd sort of been exposed to it because well, I was working would, in- you yeah. would have, but it was like- it I was, was working in the field. Yeah, but like 9-11, it was like really showed the prevalence of it. Well, not just the prevalence, also the impact of an event yes. if it is yes. if it is a well thought out. I mean, a lot of people have sort of gone, you can't say that, but it's like the strategy yep. of attacking the trade towers the way they did was- Simply brilliant. Oh, my God. It was incredible. Considering and the number of times they'd tried before and then it was like, hang on, why don't we – not only did it knock the building down, it also shut down the stock mass, market. And it was mass casualties. Mass casualties. With, shut down the airlines in America for for a week. Yeah, and with then on minimum like casualties on their end. Inconvenienced every traveller for the rest of time. Oh, yeah. And on top of that, dragged America into a war it didn't need to go into. 100%. Right? Yeah, so I think, look, the whole terrorism stuff as an assassination is really important to look at. But what we really need to touch on is the Shinzo Abe thing. Which is a very interesting thing. because It's so fascinating because Japanese people don't normally – Shoot guns. Well, to they're get not, a, they're not gun people. It's harder to get a they're gun. They're stabby, Japan. stabby knife people. Yeah, well, they love a stabbing. <laughs> that's so delicious. They do. No, they do. But like, if you look at like all these people, like there's always mass stabbings. They like to get out with the knives and mass stab. Yeah, stabbing and sarin gas is the other one. Yeah, that, yeah, because yeah. they don't have, they don't have access to guns. But this guy like built the gun. Built them using nine volt batteries and and tubes. Right now, yes. so the interesting thing about that though is the motivation because mm. it means it was not an assassination. It was an out-and-out -out murder. But it was politically motivated. No, it wasn't. I thought it was. No. Do you why? know why he did it? Really interesting. This oh, is it was something to do with his 
parents. His his parents, yep. Yes. You're on the right track. Yes. Right. Now, the interesting thing was Shinzo Abe was very active. Well, Shinzo Abe's grandmother was extremely active in what's this, known as the Unification Church. That's right. The Unification Church run by uh, a lovely Korean gentleman by the name of Reverend Moon. Yep. Right. Now, Reverend Moon, the Moonies as they're called, are renowned for these mass weddings where, you know, they have 5,000 couples getting married in a stadium. And in fact, one of the last mass weddings that had happened in yeah. Korea, one of the uh, the Unification Church, Shinzo Abe sent a video message congratulating all the couples because he was still quite heavily involved in the Unification yeah. Church as well. The problem with the Unification Church is it's one of those churches that says, give us all your money. Now, this guy and the assassin, Tetsuya Yamagami. Yep. Right. So Tetsuya Yamagami's family had a business, they had a large business that basically went bankrupt because his parents, I think his mother, kept giving, giving all of the away. money yep. to the Unification Church. Now, there were cases, lawsuits in Japan of people trying to get the money back out of the Unification Church, but of course, because the yep. money went offshore, it's very difficult to get that money back. But this guy basically decided that Shinzo Abe was the person that had to pay. Yeah. And Yamagami got within seven meters. Of seven meters. Shinzo fired Abe. once and missed. And then fired a second time. Now, yeah. this if you see the apparently, weapon- Apparently, the, the bodyguards was a massive foul. They had two and a half huge. seconds where they could have, like, taken yep. Shinzo down and, like, he could have avoided that yep. fatal shot. But that's also the other thing with an assassination is you don't expect it to happen. Like, if you re- have you ever seen the footage of Ronald Reagan, the shooting of Ronald Reagan? No, I right. don't really sit around watching sh- stuff like that. Oh, you know, it's something you do when you go, oh, Republicans. No, anyway, <laughs> so Reagan's getting in his car yep. and you hear bang, 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 three shots. Yeah. Yeah. And he sort of looks kind of stricken and a bit shocked. And his bodyguards, he's in the car and gone. Yes. And the classic was, I think I was in year 10 at the time when yeah. it happened. I'm so and excited. I, yeah, I was so excited because we had to do a presentation. <laughs> and one of the things you see is one of his Secret Service guys with an Uzi, right? Just this Uzi comes out <laughs> of nowhere and you're like, yeah. where? And I thought, well, he must have this really long holster. Uh, that sort yes. of sits down the leg of his pants. And, you know, basically I got a dick joke out of it in a school presentation. And you were so happy about that. <laughs> I so totally was. And, <laughs> and, even my- and thus begun my career in comedy. <laughs> As an idiot. And, you know, what was really nice was the teacher went, oh, <sighs> i got to pay that. Because <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I, I made sure that the holster had United States Secret Service running down the length of it. Oh. Um yeah, I was, I'm a kid. You, you still love this joke, I don't do. you? I do. I'm so excited. <laughs> anyway, the thing about the Reagan thing was, again, that was not an assassination attempt. That yep. was a guy who wanted to kill him. And the classic reason was he shot Reagan because in Taxi the acting Driver- was bad. The acting was bad. No, in Taxi Driver, <laughs> at one point, Robert De Niro turns around to Jodie Foster and says, what do you want me to do for, you know, to prove that I love yeah. you? And she says, kill the president. Oh, so he was- And he did that- to prove his love for Jodie Foster. To f- Jodie Foster. <laughs> okay, that's J- even Jodie Foster is just like what? What the hell, dude? Yeah. It wasn't even me. It was a character. But right. I mean, th- there is the classic thing of, I, and I do love this story, is when Nancy Reagan went to the hospital and you know, walked in to see Reagan. Reagan's first words were, "Sorry, honey, I forgot to duck." It's just like, dude. How cold are you? Yes. How stone cold must you be to go, I just got shot by a guy in the street and I'm just like, whoops, my fault. Yeah, and like, well, so the Shinzo Abe stuff is really interesting because a lot of people assumed it was politically motivated because he Mm. literally was a defining prime minister. Like there were a lot of people that he really pissed off (laughs) during his time. A lot of people. uh, During his tenure. Yeah, but also you look at something like um, JFK, the conspiracy theories around JFK I know, I are it. huge. Interestingly enough, a guy went back to Dallas because yeah. I think there were six shots, four shots mm. fired. There was a number of shots fired, you know, including a headshot. Like the distance was amazing. I mean, there's that lovely scene in Full Metal Jacket where the drill sergeant goes, and why was he able to get all those shots off and get a headshot? Because he was trained by the Marines. Yeah. Now he was using a, a mail-order rifle, yep. which wasn't a great weapon, but they couldn't find the third bullet. And this guy actually went, I wonder, and he yep. followed the footage of the car and realised Lee Harvey Oswald yep. uh, took four shots, I think it was, but one of the bullets went missing. Yep. This guy looked at the film, 
check the sniper's nest that Lee Harvey Oswald was shooting from in the book suppository, yep. as everyone likes to say, the book depository there in Dallas, and realise that at one point the view of the car would have been obscured by a lamppost. Right. So he climbed to the top of the lamppost and found a crease in the top of it where a bullet would have ricocheted off it. Right. And it basically he sort of said, this kind of is the evidence that the grassy knoll and the second shooter yeah, and all that never stuff happened. never happened. Yes. But again, the assassination of JFK – no one knows why Harvey Oswald did it. No, well, because he still doesn't say I why mean, he did it. There, he was he went to Russia. He was a communist. There was all this stuff. He was involved with. He the never mafia. got the opportunity to say why. He did it. Yeah, because Jack Ruby shot him. Yes, which was also I mean with that's, a pistol, and that is kind of where this whole conspiracy theory comes from. Yeah. But anyway, look, assassinations. We could talk all day about them. They're, we they're really, really could. It's, they're really the, interesting. I, I even I, I've got it. And we won't have time to talk about it. Which is the CIA handbook on assassination. Oh well, maybe we need to do a little bite size on. We'll do a bite size. We'll do the CIA book yes. on assassination. So, guys, if you want to know how to assassinate somebody, not that we're encouraging you no, to do no, that. No, no, no. We, in fact, we're well, not. Actually, should we even be positioning it like that? Because <laughs> what if someone blames us? If you're curious in how the CIA would or used to take uh, yes. people out, yes. We'll do a little bite-sized about that. Sounds good. Okay.